So hello fellow Earthlings, this is Earthling 645546372 and the common sense skeptic, this YouTube channel, is ruining my view of Elon Musk and I'll go into that in a second, just a general overview about myself. I have a couple of degrees, I've traveled uh, quite a bit, more than I thought that I would at this point. I've been in the Army Reserves for a while uh, before I left. And um, yeah, that's it. So I've been, I've looked at YouTube channels like, for example, Thunderfoot, where he talked about the Hyperloop. And he gave some insight based on his background in physics, having to deal with vacuum tubes. And he gave a very compelling or not a, but several compelling arguments as to why it would not be a good idea to build the Hyperloop and why it would, it's very unlikely to function as advertised, to function well, pretty much, period. Um, essentially, what his argument, well, one of his arguments come down to the idea that you already have magnetic levitation trains that travel very fast, and at best, um, that's what you would get from a Hyperloop. You would take out the air in order to reduce the air resistance in the tube, but then you would be adding in so many more problems as to, be, to make the whole concept unusable. And that's one part of it. So based on that, and based on the fact that, um, you know, Elon Musk had apparently taken this idea that other people had come up with. At least someone else a hundred years ago had come up with a similar idea. And hey, it's been that long and nobody has found a way or it has not been implemented. And there are really good reasons for that. Now, as I went looking at Elon Musk a little bit more, I mean, there was a whole pedo guy incident where I felt like the guy insulted Elon Musk and perhaps he didn't need to uh, continue the vendetta against him. But if someone insults you, um, if, if there's a, a question of, hey, you have a suggestion and it doesn't work, okay, that's fine. But if somebody is, you know, kind of mocking you, um, well, maybe if you push back, that's not necessarily the worst thing. Of course, people have given arguments that suggest that someone should not punch down because that is unfair. Because there are going to be so many more people on your side as opposed to on the other person's side. It is not reputable. It's not a good idea to l unleash your followers against someone like that. And, um, but yeah, at any rate... Um, there are other issues, unfortunately, and when I started looking at the YouTube channel, uh, the I think it's called the Common Sense Skeptic, I realized that they, I think they have a, a two-part session or video on Elon Musk, and it's, I think the latest one is, no, it's not the latest one, but it's a recent one, the most recent one on Elon Musk anyway is um, debunking Elon Musk. And when you go through it, you know, it, it's kind of like slight kicks to my stomach um, with respect to Elon because I respect Tesla so much, the fact that it's not much. I mean, in the overall scheme of uh, vehicles that are on the road, we have to acknowledge that it's not really much. And yet it is so much more than anybody else has seemingly been able to achieve. But when you listen to the common sense skeptic in terms of the op in terms of the in terms of the modus operandi of Elon Musk whereby he seems to be for one thing, he he's overwhelmingly just lucky. He might suggest that um, he did not come from means and maybe not every part of his life was um, carpeted 
well carpeted and well um, uh, flush with money per se but definitely he comes from families that had access to money and there's that idea that okay he just did everything on his own and is this genius that has a capacity and capability that spans several different fields when it comes to uh, EVs, when it comes to solar panel technology on houses, when it comes to Neuralink and some kind of a computer human interface, and when it comes to SpaceX and, and rocket technology. But what the common sense skeptic seems to reveal is that at least where it comes to almost everything except SpaceX per se, the whole idea, and even I suppose with respect to SpaceX, the idea is that not only are there so many other people who are involved in all of these projects, of course, naturally, but in many instances, Anybody who might upstage Elon is quickly dispatched in a short order, whether it might be months or years. If you take some of the limelight away from him, then he is going to be coming after you. To become the CEO of whatever organization that he might initially have just been an investor in. And he... You know, we have seen that he is too eager to set uh, deadlines, that unachievable deadlines. And I know how that works. I know how that works because I've thought that I could do th something in a certain amount of time and over and over and over and over and over again, I've been wrong, 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 wrong. So I get that. So what I do now is I just don't, really set a deadline per se for many things that I do. I, I just know that I'm going to try uh, as best as I can in many instances to get things done as quickly as I can. But I know that it's very unlikely to be able to predict when you're going to be able to finish something that you've never tried. This is not the second go around in most of these instances. So at least for myself, I have given up as much as possible on giving um, certain times or deadlines for when I think something is going to be done because almost everything that we're trying is not the first time that we've done it. But um, the whole thing, and I have a, you know, they've done a lot of different pieces on organizations that Elon Musk is involved in. I guess I'm looking at this one on Neuralink whereby the person who was the president of the company, the CEO was not even present, the, at least the listed CEO was not even present at a presentation that Elon Musk gave. The president of the company, who was one of the people who founded the company, did not have very much to say at all, even though he was there. And Musk is pretty much just taking the attention for himself and the whole initiative as to having started up the company and rewriting history to make himself seem well you know what he is the common denominator across many of these companies and then you see that he is the person who even if he started off just being an investor wants things to be a particular way, even if it might not be the best idea. I mean, at least for me, one of the first things that I saw with respect to this, when I still kind of had him up on a pedestal, and I have to admit, I haven't completely shoved him off of this pedestal in my mind, but one of the things that I saw, and I guess continue to see, is when he said um, he was going to completely... Uh, have his, his Tesla, one of the Tesla factory, factories, the Gigafactory, be completely run by robots. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. And then it completely did not work. I mean, it almost bankrupted the company 
trying to get these cars built just by robots. And, you know, this is not EV technology. This is something that if it were possible, obviously Ford and, you know, um, all of the other automotive companies, they would have, or it, it would have been in their best interest to do something similarly. And yet, as far as we know, they have not. They still have lots of automotive workers running their factories. So, you know, this is Elon talking outside of, he's not a robotics expert as far as I know. He, this is his first car company as far as I know. And it's all well and good to say what you want and to go for it. But maybe, maybe you should investigate what the other car companies have tried and, and see how far it got them. But anyway, it, the whole series of um, videos that the Common Sense Skeptic channel has released, wow, they just make Elon seem like a um, megalomaniacal, um, compulsive, somebody who just needs all the attention all the time kind of thing. Um, and, you know, Steve Jobs was supposedly someone who was similar to that in that somebody would come up with an idea at a meeting and two weeks later, after shooting down the idea, he would come back and pretend that it was his idea. And lots of people said that. It's not just one disgruntled worker who said that. So that is kind of, you know, that's like a personality fault. I've never heard that Elon has done that. But when you, when you want to rewrite the history of the companies that you are currently running, if you want to rewrite the history to make it seem that nothing happened before you came on the scene, that, in a way, is, is pretty much like that. It's kind of similar to that kind of thing that Steve Jobs used to do. And hmm, it really, it makes him seem more mortal, which is a good thing. But then it also makes it seem less likely that all the hopes that we had pinned on him in terms of being able to succeed when, with respect to space exploration, with respect to well, certainly Hyperloop, Hyperloop is like a pipe dream. Um, with respect to Neuralink, everything that he's involved in seems less likely to succeed. And he just seems more and more like a, one of these, um, what you would call um, first generation stars maybe, that is just going to burn very bright, but not very long. Anyway, guys, um, that's it for me. Feel free to like, subscribe, or any of those things that you would like if someone were listening to stuff that you created. Have a good one. Peace.